Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Let's get to some painting today. We're going to start out here with a mixture of Prussian blue, ultra marine blue, titanium white, a touch of the liquid white, and some raw umber. A little more of the blue than the umber, and we'll use that white to lighten it up. Today I'm using a large one and a half chip brush. Great to use for quick application of the paint. Touch more raw umber, liquid white, lemon yellow, and nemthal crimson. Keep the last two faint as a little touch, don't need a lot. Gonna make a nice dark kind of brown gray mix here. These are going to be the shadow color on our clouds. As you can see, I have marked out the proportions and the perspective in pencil, all of my major formations of the clouds. I have marked in the horizon line, where the waves are gonna come in, where the beach starts, and even some rocks on the left-hand side. Touch more of the lighter blue mix, more white added. Notice how simple I kept the line work, just straight lines. I used a ruler to put all those in. The lines on the bottom half of the canvas are converging onto a single point. I marked out the clouds, just loosely sketching them in. Mostly wanted to know where the edges of them were. I want to know where the sky begins and where the clouds end. And that's all the information you really need. The rest can be filled in with the paint. Here's some coral mix, titanium white, lemon yellow, raw umber, namthal crimson. A lot of the white there, some titanium white in that as well. Soft coral color. Touch more of the white. Gonna soften the upper edge of this layer of low-hanging marine layer clouds. Clean my brush off and back to my coral mix with some more of the yellow and more of the crimson. And you can see the red coming through. Let's intensify the orange. More yellow, more red, more titanium white. It's a beautiful morning when I took the photograph. That's the basis of this piece. Colors are so vibrant. Get a bit of the lighter blue mix, different brush. Oil paint is fantastic to work with. It applies very easily. It blends together so seamlessly. And the end result is so rich as well, very vibrant and bold.
blending out here. Back to my light orange and coral mixture, bringing in these beautiful coral highlights that form the bulk of this cloud layer this morning. Back to the umber and dark blue mixture. Going to reestablish the shadows in these clouds. Just bounce that brush along, pressing the bristles straight into the canvas. And it connects down here, so let's add that back in. Back to my coral mixture and we'll start to blend it back together again. A little more of the light blue mix, clean the brush off a little bit. I usually just kind of tap it out on a paper towel if I don't want all the color to be lost. And we're going to lighten up a few spots over here and just blend out the tops of these clouds. Back to the titanium white. Grab another brush, coral mixture, and soften and blend out. and a little more of the light blue mix. I have two of these brushes going back and forth. Gently, gently softening here. Let's grab a touch of the lizard and crimson with some white, a little bit of that coral mixture as well. Put in a little bit of the reddish glow, this kind of reddish undertone. Here's some ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, and liquid white. Using my large 2 inch wash brush, great brush for filling in large swaths of the canvas. And this is going to be my farthest background layer of the ocean. Very dark, deep blues happening today. I'm being a little bit artistic with the representation of the color for this background layer of blue. I'm pushing the blue a little richer, a little more vibrant, a little oversaturated today in this piece. In reality, it had more of a silver cast, more of a muted gray, but I think the blue just pops and pulls your eye in. And having it be a little bit artistic, a little bit impressioned, is not a bad thing. Trying to get the top edge of this to be more or less straight. And we can go back in with the light blue mix and soften and straighten as we need to. Now 
Note that that Prussian blue is a very strong color and it likes to leak into other colors, so be careful. If you get some on your brush, watch out where you put it. If you put it up into the coral and the orange higher up, it's going to have a hard time getting rid of it. Be careful when you're using this Prussian blue. It can kind of get everywhere, so watch out for that. It will slowly take over a composition if you let it. Back to my dark blue mix with the 2 inch wash brush. And I need to follow these lines so I'm going to start to mark them back in loosely. Here's a bit of the coral mix with that brush. Toss that in as some of that color is going to show up from the clouds above and the sky above. Water is clear, it just reflects what's above. Here is some liquid white, Prussian blue, small bright brush. That big two inch wash brush got us started, but it's a little bit unwieldy, so I switched to a smaller brush and I can get in and get the angles to be more accurate. This back layer can be straight, and then each line coming off of that is gonna converge on the left hand side of the canvas. You can see here I'm moving the lines, adjusting things as I need to, all part of the process of establishing the perspective. Simple trick, simple device to do single point perspective, but it has fantastic results and quickly can give you a beautiful looking piece of art. Here's some more of the blue, dirty brush, a little bit darker, I want to establish this back line a little bit thicker. Trying to be very careful and very straight here, as much as possible. Again, if it's not perfect, it's okay. Suppose I could get a ruler and press it down and then paint to the ruler and that would keep it very straight but then the ruler would get paint all over it so I'm not sure I want to do that. Here is some liquid white mixed with the titanium white and I've grabbed my favorite brush for doing waves and that's the stencil brush. The stencil brush has a nice rounded edge and I can turn it right to the corner and use that to create some wonderful looking wave effects. Can't see this lighter color, this white, without having the deep, rich, darker blue behind it. It's important that you get your darks in there so that the lights appear even brighter. If you use too much white overall, it will start looking a little bit washed out and won't have the presence you need. It's a very fine line to walk sometimes when you're trying to create more of a pastel piece is that it can start looking a little bit too faded and that can easily get out of hand. So trying to find the right balance is important. Just blending together there in the back. A little more of the white rolling along the front edge there.
Now I'm going to blend here in the front with this brush, just soften everything together. I'm going to blend this out, fix the perspective a little bit more. Touch more of the white here. Going to let it bend down lower and reach around down towards the farthest point. A little high there, so we'll take a brush and just blend out what we don't want. Mirror this above, but have it slowly and gradually converge on the lower line. And don't forget some in the front as well. Let's grab a small angle brush for this one. Bringing back in more of the titanium white and liquid white mixture, putting in the tops of these waves right here in the very, very front edge of this shoreline. Touch more of the white. Lots of paint on that brush. Grab a little more of the dark blue mixture with my bright brush. I'm gonna blend this together. Taking the small angle brush, let's grab a little more of that dark blue mixture. And we're going to use this as a shadow color right underneath the crests of these waves. Because I'm putting the dark right underneath the white, it's going to make the white pop and move forward. It's going to have that nice shadow. And we will blend this smoothly and transition into the lighter blue, mid-tone blue, I should say, that is in between the waves. more of the darker blue and just underneath the very very front edge of these waves just put a little line in here it's a subtle thing but it adds so much depth and dimension to the piece and I'm going back over the line with a little bit of white to push it down a little more Take a little brush here blend out touch more of the white Back to my dark blue mix. Over here as well. And of course we want to do this to all three layers. And if it gets a little too dense, we'll just blend it out. A little more blue at the front edge here. Less of the line at the very, very front because there's less of the under part of the wave showing. Grab my coral mix. Going to bring back in the coral a little stronger. Okay, let's get some titanium white, some raw umber, and some namphal crimson mixed together. 
get a nice brown. Crimson will warm up the color and add a little bit of heat. Touch more of the umber as we go along, but we're going to start in with this kind of gray-brown mixture. And here is our beach. more of the Prussian blue in the raw umber using my bright brush again and here we're going to start to mark out some rocks that are over here a bit more of the umber and the dark blue mix make these stand out against the sky Back to my brown mix, gonna soften the front edge of these, blending here. Let's grab some of my coral mix with a clean brush and we're going to put some highlights down on the tops of these rocks. Okay, stencil brush, liquid white, put in some more waves over here crashing into these rocks. A little bit too much, we're going to fix that in a second. We'll put some more white down over here. Take my palette knife, clean off the excess, and then we'll blend it out with my angle brush. little bit of shadow color. A little more raw umber. Lots of brushwork here. Some more of the white, just to break up the sand a bit more. Touch more of the brown. We're basically done. Here is the final piece.